morning, guys. This is day six of nine days in the north. <laughs> I don't really want to get up this morning because it's still cloudy. It's not too cold, but it's damp. But we're going to pack out of here and uh, maybe hit some grouse on the way out. We have a uh, trap course tonight at uh, 5. So they hold day to bump around, but we also have a three hour drive back. So we're going to mosey on out of here. Yep, still cloudy. Oh well. Ready. Now just for the soggy tent. Well that works. Welcome to the sand pit camp. It sounds like the band camp. Jeremy's avoiding putting his tent up. He thinks it's gonna dry before he puts it away. No, I'm just gonna shove it all in here. Good man. We can just go hunt wherever and we don't have to come back. Yeah, no. There's, all packed up. there's no way the tent, yeah, I'm done. There's no way that tent's gonna be dry today. No. I'm, I gave up on that long ago. Pack it up. You said it was gonna be clear this morning. Take it home. <laughs> it's clearing. <laughs> and uh, I just unpack it when I get home and air it out. Because there's, there's no way you're going to manage to get all your stuff dry out in the bush. Not like this. I brought my simple shot slingshot. I think we were going to get into a huge numbers of grouse. Uh, we saw, I think, 10 yesterday, which is a pretty good day. But in the rain and the conditions and us wanting to find and make sure we got food, we didn't mess around with any of the weird weapons I brought. I also brought primitive bow and uh, I'd still like to try it if I can make that a possibility. So this is on the bucket list of things to do. Use that slingshot to get some grouse. I'll carry around today. Who knows, maybe the weather will improve and we'll get lots of birds. Be nice to try it. If I don't use this today, watch for a squirrel hunt video uh, down south back home. We got lots of squirrels and lots of time to mess around with this equipment. Bush groceries? Yeah. Put them in our uh, plug-in cooler and away we go. Yeah. So that's a powered cooler and it runs off the car battery power. So there's a cable that runs out the back here all the way to the front, which is perfect. And we can still access our snacks. Like we might want to uh, grab a duck while we're driving. Right, Jerry? Yep. Grab a dock and munch on it. We want to make sure it stays road snack. Road snacks, yeah. Portable food, you know. You don't have to stop and cook for two or three hours. You just grab a dock. A lot of guys just drive up the road, shoot the birds on the road, and keep going, run the ATV, and just put miles on. You can be successful that way, but I don't feel it's very legal or sporting. You're missing part of the experience. <laughs> the hunting part. It's more... Uh, <clears throat> Driving just, with a chance of gross. <laughs> it's just laziness. And uh, I don't know. Jeremy thinks that people just get lost and don't want to do it, um, which is a distinct possibility. But pick a road or a, tra a trail, just go off 20 feet, and then just hit the trail again. Uh, Jerry likes to do zigzags, so one side, the other side, and then you never get lost going one way too yeah. much. I or got turned around yesterday, but because we're each hunting the opposite side of the road. If I shout and I hear you. Yeah. I know oh, the road is that why you were yelling for me? Yeah, I got, <laughs> I was good. I actually was on my way to the road, but I was uh, not confident. Yeah, well, I did uh, yell for you a couple times yesterday yeah. as well in the morning, uh, but you did not answer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you wandered too far. <laughs> I did, I wandered too far, but I, you know, I like I was planning to do a loop, but what happens if, if you go too wide and then you do too short a loop on the return trip, yeah. then you end up doing another loop because what you feel like you're going right, you go right yeah. and you go right and you go right and you're right. And if you don't make your second loop big enough at the right time, you miss the road. And if you make the other one big enough, you end up further away. So you have to make that second yeah. 
the, you have to know and with no sun you don't know when that lupus should be made so yeah you be careful if you do it a couple good tricks so always bring a compass <laughs> and if you're going into the road get a rough bearing and then wherever you are <laughs> as long as you take the opposite bearing out yeah you're relatively likely to hit the road and jeremy's pretending and he has a compass which he doesn't well i actually have an electronic one but i don't use it <laughs> don't on, deep on this but oh, also you do. your yeah. gps one thing you should always do is anytime you park your vehicle you should mark your vehicle yeah and then wherever you go wherever you end up you can always get a straight line back to your vehicle even if you don't get back on roads trails or whatever yeah it might not be the nicest straight line but yeah. It's going to get you back to your vehicle. I don't use any technology. You just wait for the sun to come shout. out and shout. 12 degrees outside. Yeah. And that's about the right temperature for the mosquitoes. <laughs> They're still trying to bite us in September. This is insane. It's a little much. Yeah, they never got the memo. No, it's over. Yeah. It's over for you guys. Uh, here's my outfit for today. I got pumpkin orange, uh, combination vest, and toque. I got the ear protection on as always, GoPro. Rocking the Browning Wicked Wing A5. Does some damage, and I got a full choke on there, which I don't know if you should go with full choke, but you can just two headshots, it'll be all right. And then the long distance shots will be no problem. You can use whatever you want. 20... The wicked wind because he farts all the time. Wicked wing. <laughs> wicked wind. Oh. <laughs> Take it back. Wow, we spotted that guy on the road. <laughs> he tried to do a little stock on him. He was not interested in playing around too much, so he butted up in the bushes and then never, never saw him again. Find some new places, new grounds to hunt here, so we're just driving on to the next spot and we spotted him, so I would give him a shot, but he did not want to play. Going through the cut here, big clear cut. It's all properly managed, don't worry about it. Take out a section and they leave some of the dead snags in and they'll come back and um, replant it. And then in another 20 some odd years, they'll come back and do it again. And there's some areas that they've replanted and you wouldn't even know that they had cut it, aside from some very slight uh, tree characteristics. But trees are a renewable resource just like animals are. We just spotted some birds that jumped up in the field there, or road, field, road. Uh, they jumped up in here. Jeremy spotted one of them. So I'm gonna go pursue it, see if I can't find one. It's in, uh, kind of in between two swamps, left side, right side. It's really good habitat for them. My GoPro is not working anymore. It ran out of card space, but I still have the Tacticam. So I should be able to get the action on the gun mounted tacticam if anything appears. There we go. That's four down. I had to spend a little bit of time looking for them. Uh, two popped up in the tree. One was on the ground and there was actually a fourth one. So I could have almost got my limit, which is five. And Jerry, Jerry headed off on the other direction and we got four birds. So that's a really nice way to finish off the grouse hunt. 
Yeah, we almost got two limits, <laughs> right? Between the four that we ate. In two days. Yeah. Yeah, and all that mess of action in just one little spot. Yeah. Yeah. This is a really nice draw though, if we yeah. should remember this spot. Yeah, there's the swamp kind of on the edge. Yeah, it goes out to the swamp here and all in between, it was all like perfect habitat. Oh, nice. So obviously <laughs> this is the proof of that. Yeah. Just driving by and look out the window, one hopped up in the woods and then uh, you spotted the one. Yeah. And I'm like, forget that one. Like there's gotta be another one in here. And I don't know, you went on this side, I guess, uh, first right? First I went over that way. Yeah. And then I came back out and then I hopped in here. I shot that one right there. Oh. And then I hunted all this piece because I thought there yeah. might be more. But then I heard boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and you thought I missed three times. I thought, well, the way you've been shooting, I figured it was either three shots, three birds or like three <laughs> shots, no bird. Right. Because that's how that works. No, it was, I was bang on. I only just missed it. Well, I didn't miss any, but yeah. No, this gun's shooting real good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's all the gun it's all the gun <laughs> it doesn't shoot ducks worth anything but we're gonna fix that uh by saturday morning we're gonna try to get another hunt out yeah so we got lots of food now yeah lots of groceries yeah <laughs> we're trying, trying to find a bag for yeah we ran out of grocery bags um, sweet way to end this grouse hunting trip we still have about a three hour drive to get home we'll meet you guys back in civilization i still have the trap course we're in class today from 5.30 till 9. And if there's any, anything interesting there, I'll make sure we add it to the series. So I thought you had a few extra holes here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Speed holes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They look good. Yeah, so no, everything. I can get credit for one of those holes. <laughs> <laughs> I put your name on it, don't worry. <laughs> so here was, I showed you guys that weasel the other day uh, that I had tan. So there's a picture of it. I caught it in a mink box. Um, obviously using partner treasures. 